The Jewish community is blessed with, uh, with many people who are in positions of responsibility, who always do their best and who achieve good things. We truly are blessed that way. But every once in a while you come across an individual and a couple uh, who stand head and shoulders above the rest. My earliest recollections of the Academy was when the building on Pratt was still under construction. My family and I, we had moved on Pratt about a block and a half away in 1966. And my friends and I used to play on the construction site. Margaret's father was a student at the Academy on the Old West Side. And so she was second generation, our children are third generation, and please God, soon our grandchildren will be fourth generation Academy students. He was a regular student and he was active, not only in school, but also camp-wise. Uh, that, by the way, that's where he met Margaret. And he's lucky that he married her. The two of them together are a good team. We first met each other in fifth or sixth grade in B'nai Akiva. And we grew up together because we were both in the same Shevet. We were also ended up being Madrichim together up in Mosheva. And in those days, we used to spend a lot of time together, as opposed to now. <laughs> Rabbi Matanki was in my first class 46 years ago, as was Margaret. And every time that he comes into my room to say hello or do whatever, the kids always ask after he leaves, so what kind of student was Rabbi Matanki? And of course, I give that pat answer, he was an excellent student, as was Margaret. Um, and so you should know, truly, he was an excellent student. I'm a proud Academy alum. And the teachers that I had at the Academy, they were transformative. They were people that we admired. People who taught us the most important lessons of life. That's what the Academy was all about, and that's what the Academy is still all about. One of the things that the students learn at the Academy is how to be a committed Jew in a modern society. Not only do they learn how to be a committed Jew, but they also learn how to give back to the community. When I was a student, there was a secretary at the academy, Mrs. Ita Shmuel, Allah Shalom. And she would tell me that one day I would be principal of the academy. I actually fell into the job a little bit backwards. I started teaching at the academy in 1981, and one year they needed someone to fill in. And so I agreed to be the interim principal. And then, a couple of years down the road, George Haynes came to me and said, how about if we call you Dean instead of interim? Nobody knows what that means anyways. One of the most exciting things about working with the faculty of the academy, the lay leadership of the academy, is that we've always viewed this job as something that transforms lives, that will make a difference in this world. When I stepped into this role, I never would have imagined that we would be providing the finest Jewish education combined with such an extraordinary general education for our students. We never imagined it then, but today we see the reality. Our students have opportunities that we never dreamed we would be able to offer. Rabbi Matanki is one of the most innovative and creative people that we've had here in the Academy. As a student, you just don't realize how much hard work and dedication goes into being a principal behind the scenes. But as a teacher, you start to see your principal as a leader. You start to see all of the planning that goes in to meet the growing demands of students in a changing world. I just remember the whole interview process of coming into the academy and the kids shined. He made everybody feel comfortable, he, he was a back and forth like, the, like they were both in the base measures just going on one on one. Being in class with Robert Matinky as my teacher, it was really a class that opened up my eyes to um, the beauty of Torah and like the beauty of um, having a hands on learning experience. He has high expectations for our class and he wants us to go far and he wants us to push ourselves and challenge ourselves. I found out that he really did care about all of his students and that um, now I have a relationship with him beyond the classroom. 
He always would tell us, Banot Aten Chachamot, girls, you're smart. You can do it, I believe in you, and that was always really inspiring. But also, it was always really inspiring to see Erev Matinki as a personal role model, someone who's so entrenched in the community, so invested in the community. What always impressed me the most about Rabbi Matank is how he can wear so many hats so well. Always doing it with a smile and uh, frankly I don't think he sleeps at night. My dad is the busiest person I know. I'm not sure how he gets everything done in a day. You would think there's more than 24 hours in a day with him. Even the day I was born, my mom had me in the morning and then that day my dad went straight from the hospital to the academy to name me at the academy. That was important to him. He's someone who also is kind of a connector between the different communities in Chicago, whether it be the modern Orthodox community, you know, the more right-wing Orthodox community. He's been that somewhat bridge who come, kind of brings all those communities together. You can talk about Kins and when he was the head of the uh, CRC and he's the principal of the school and he used to be the assistant uh, superintendent of the ATT. And I think it's just very, very important that he pursued his vision. My father was always involved in really dozens of organizations and as a kid just that's what he did and he made it work. Looking back now I appreciate it that much more how much he put into each organization and how much he worked with people and created relationships, good relationships with people. I'm always so amazed and impressed how Reverend Tenke uh, is able to do the things he does and he still has raised a wonderful family and that credit, I think, uh, goes to Margaret, and uh, she is a pillar and an asset to the community. My dad stands out more in the front lines, but very naturally it falls on my mom to pull it all together, and without her, I don't think it would be able to happen. She's constantly cutting and preparing and gluing and shopping for different different activities at Ari Crown or at Kins. She's constantly working on different communal events. Mrs. Matanke, quote from Harry Truman is what comes to my mind. It's amazing what a person could accomplish if they don't care who gets the credit. She did all of the programming at Ari Crown and she did phenomenal things. The kids were so engaged and she always had a smile. From a single child in the hallway to an entire classroom. She is, I believe, uh, Airy Crown's secret weapon. I always wanted to be a teacher because I enjoy helping kids learn. And if they enjoy learning, then it will be something that they'll continue to enjoy in the future. With everything that they've learned, I hope that they'll be able to give to their communities at large and play a part in the future of the Jewish people. A leader in anything is somebody that has the ability to lead, the knowledge, and more than anything else, the passion. And Lenny's just a marvelous, marvelous definition and an example of a real leader. I just wish we had more of them. Rabbi Matanki, it's a great, great rabbi, but an outstanding human being. Somebody who combines so many skills, who can see the forest and yet care for the individual trees, who can build a community and yet care for every member of it. That is somebody very, very rare indeed. It seems to be, you know, if, if Rabbi Matanki was only a fabulous dean uh, at the uh, academy, Diagonal. If only he was the dean and uh, the uh, the congregational rabbi at KINS Diagonal. If he was both of those and the former president of the Rabbinical Council of America Diagonal. And I can go on and on and on. And that's unique. It takes great talent and it also takes extraordinary commitment and sacrifice. The wonderful thing about Lenny is that he's Lenny. Um, he is real, he is open, he cares, he sees life as a gift, and yet you can't speak to Rabbi Matanki without hearing very quickly, Margaret and I. And it's no accident. It's the sense that when we're very lucky, uh, yin and yang come together 
and achieve the kind of wholeness that they're comfortable spreading to the world. I really feel like I've played a very small part in what's happened at the Academy for the last 36 years. But I do have to say that I'm very proud of my husband for everything that he's done for the Academy in the last 36 years. And Margaret, I have to disagree with you because if it wasn't for all that you did, taking control of our family at, at home and pushing me when I needed to be pushed, I wouldn't have achieved what I did and the Academy wouldn't be what it is today. To be the Dean of the Academy is an honor, but along the way I've been so very fortunate to work alongside an extraordinary group of professionals, my administration, my faculty, the Associated Talmud Torahs, the Federation, and especially Dr. Nassiter, the Crown family, Lester Crown, Mr. Corky Goodman, and of course, all of the talented lay leadership that have brought us to the 75th anniversary. I've spoken often about the Academy being a place we call home. And it's an honor to be able to continue that home in all of its new configurations and all of its new dreams. But to stay true to those messages, I learned from Rabbi Rappaport and my teachers, Margaret learned from Rabbi Goodman and her teachers, and that we continue to cherish every day of our lives.